syndrome of written invariant. But for Cori Clavia's ripples, we understand them much better. But before I go to this very uh, special class of manifolds, I would like to say a few words about Grimm of Witten invariants in general. Um, let X omega J be a compact Taylor manifold. Grimm of Witten theory of X can be viewed as a mathematical theory of A model topological string theory on X. And you have heard about this a lot so far. Um, Grimm of Witten invariants are A model topological closed string amplitudes. They count parameterized holomorphic curve in X. This Grom of Witten invariants are mathematically defined for any compact Taylor manifold uh, in all genera. Um, on the other hand, open Grom of Witten invariants are the A model topological open string amplitude. <coughs> they are supposed to count holomorphic curves in X with boundaries in a Lagrangian submanifold L of X. L can be possibly disconnected. Open Grimm of Witten invariants are mathematically defined only for special X and L. And so next, um, I would like to review the Grimm of Witten invariants of Clavial threefolds. This <coughs> yeah, have been mentioned in this conference a lot of times, so maybe I should give you a mathematical definition. Um, let X be a projective Clavial threefold that M bar G0 X beta be the moduli space of genus G degree beta stable maps to X. Uh, so, they, so this moduli space parameterized um, morphisms from a possibly nodal genus G projective curve to X such that the push forward of the fundamental class of the curve is a second homology class beta of X. Um, so since we are in the projective uh, uh, situation, um, we can use the algebraic definition. Then this moduli space is the proper building Munford stack with a perfect obstruction theory of virtual dimension zero. If you prefer the differential <coughs> geometric language, it is um, housed off and compact singular orbital. It's singular, so it does not have a tangent bundle, but it has a virtual tangent bundle, which is the difference of two vector bundles um, on the moduli space. And this virtual, uh, these two vector bundles have the same rank. So the virtual dimension of the tangent bundle is zero. Um, so now we can define genus G degree beta group of Witten invariant X to be the following. So this integral sign stands for the pairing between homology and cohomology classes. There is a um, virtual fundamental class, which is um, in the expected degree. It's a zeroth homology class, but with rational coefficient. You pair it with one, you get a rational number. So this has been constructed in much more generality by several groups. So I would like to remark that um, the construction of this virtual fundamental class relies on two things, um, the virtual tangent bundle and the properness or compactness of the moduli space. If your X is non-compact, clavial threefold, this moduli space still has a virtual bundle, virtual tangent bundle of rank zero but the moduli space might not be compact. Suppose that for some particular genus, G and degree beta, this moduli space is compact. Then you can still define room of Witten invariant for this particular genus and degree. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. First, local curve resolve conifer, which is the total space of O minus 1 plus O minus 1 over P1. It is a non-compact clavial threefold. The second homology class of X is equal to the second homology, yeah, the second homology group of the base P1. <coughs> if you have any non-constant holomorphic map from a Riemann surface to the total space, 
it must factor through the zero section. So as um, yeah, the lemma for stacks or topological spaces, these two spaces are actually identical when degree is positive. They have different uh, virtu virtual tangent bundles, though. The virtual dimension of the left-hand side is zero, but the virtual dimension of the right-hand side is non-zero. But you know it's compact, so for this non-compact club L3 fold, you can still define um, Grim of Witten invariant for any genus and any non-zero degree. Similarly, you can consider local surface. Let X be the total space of the canonical line bundle of a final surface. So yeah, there are only 10 of them. Uh, the second homology group of X is isomorphic to the second homology group of the base. If you take any non-zero effective class, then this two, oh. yeah, then these two spaces are actually, um, these two spaces are identical. The right-hand side is compact because S is. So we know that in this case, we can still define um, Gromov-Witten invariants for this non-compact club L3 fold for any genus and any non-zero degree. Um, so O minus one plus O minus one is an example of a toric club L3 fold. A club L3 fold X is toric if it contains this complex algebraic torus uh, so as open dense subset and the action of T on itself extends to X. All toric labial threefolds are non-compact. Um, so it, the most trivial example is C3, and O minus one plus O minus one and O minus three. So we have seen that um, for the resolved conical and for O minus three over P1, um, we can still define gromov witten invariant for any genus and any non-zero degree. So now um, there is a subtorus P prime of this capital T, which acts trivially on the canonical line bound of X. Um, and this subtorus acts on the moduli space an axonic virtual tangent bundle. The fixed point set of T prime is the same as the fixed point set of T. And it is compact for any uh, toric club L3 fold. Um, so in the last line, suppose that your gromov witten invariants are defined. Uh, then the, in the last line, the first equality is a definition. And the second equality is virtual localization. But however, in some cases, the um, yeah the first equality doesn't make sense because the moduli space itself is non-compact. But this last thing, yeah, but this but this last expression, which is the integral over the fixed point. Um, is always defined. So, so now we can take this as definition. Yeah, take the last one as the definition. But there is some issue here because um, so 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 if M. If this moduli space is compact, and you have push forward from the <coughs> yeah, this is like you can think it as integration over the fiber. Now, if you have, um, so 
So I use rational coefficient. So you have push forward to the equivariant cohomology of a point. And so then this is um, a polynomial ring in two variables. Yeah, two equivariant parameters. So, but when mg If it's non-compact, yeah, so we have, so one is not defined. And two takes values. A priori, two should take value in the fractional field instead of the polynomial ring. But in this case, we can actually show that <coughs> this takes values in um, actually um, this. So, so in general, a priori, if you integrate one, then because of the degree reason, you should get the rational function in u1 and u2, homogeneous of degree zero. But we can show that if we use p prime, then actually we get a rational number, not a rational function of u1 and u2. So this needs some proof. And actually, this is not true if we use the big torus, like the rank three torus. If we use the rank three torus, then when this is not defined, this is in general some rational function depends on depending on three variables. So in any case, now we can define gromov witten invariance for any torus quadial threefold, for any genus and any degree, using this uh, sub-torus. Okay. So, so, so these are uh, closed gromov witten invariants. So next, I want to define some open gromov witten invariance, we will consider a very special class of Lagrangian submanifolds introduced by Agnagic and Waffa. Um, so we consider the maximal compact sub subgroup of this rank two subtorus. Um, so it is um, a compact two-dimensional torus. Um, so I can define this Agnagic Waffa brain in terms of coordinates. But I think it suffices to uh, state the following two properties. So first, um, there is a PR prime equivalent pipiomorphism between such an Agnashi Vafa A brain in X and circle times C. And it's equivalent where under this identification, the uh, PR prime acts on the circle times C uh, <coughs> by the following explicit formula. And secondly, um, this Agnagic Vafa Abram L intersects a unique one dimensional T orbit closure in X um, along a circle. And this circle can be identified with circle times the origin of C under the identification. Oh, uh, and actually, let's assume that our X has, a <laughs> our, our Tori Claudio 3 4 has at least one fixed. There, there's some curve. Okay, so then, then a one-dimensional orbit closure is either um, either C or P1. So, for example, So I'm drawing the one-dimensional orbit closures in the result conifold. So, so this, this is uh, P1, and these four are C. And so, if, if, so th this will be an inner brain. And this will be an outer brain. Sometimes, instead of drawing this, we draw we use a light segment to represent 
um, a P1, an array to represent a C, and a dot to represent the brain. Okay, so we, we will compute open gromov witten events for such uh, Lagrangian sum manifold. Um, so let's so now I would like to describe open gromov witten events for such an agnostic alpha A brain. So let's L be an agnostic alpha A brain in toric clavial three for X. Open gromov witten events of XL count holomorphic maps U from a border Riemann surface sigma to X with boundary in L. And the boundary is a disjoint union of edge circles. And such a, so, so in, in the closed gromov witten invariance case, um, you have uh, genus and degree. Now you have more topological invariance. First, you have topological type of the domain, GH, where G is the number of handles and H is the number of holes of your domain. And secondly, you have topological type of the map. So you can push forward the fundamental class of sigma. And this is the relative second homology class of the pair XL, beta prime. And you, oh, so I should tell you that you orient your domain by the holomorphic structure. It's a Riemann, border Riemann surface. And also the boundary circles uh, are equipped with uh, induced orientation. So you push forward, you can also push forward the fundamental class of your boundary circles. You get this um, first homology class. Um, of your Lagrangian sum manifold, but now your Lagrangian sum manifold is a circle times C, so you can identify it with C. And actually, if it's a, so actually the way we, yeah, we want to actually uh, choose, so when it's outer brain, we choose this holomorphic disk, and when it's inner brain, we choose one of them, and use this boundary to trivialize the first, um, the, the first homology group. Okay, and and the thirdly, actually, it depends on uh, the framing of the Lagrangian sum manifold, which is an integer. So once you fix this topological data, you are supposed to get some rational number. And if you, yeah, so um, and more general. Okay, so. So, so these are open gromov witten events for one agnostic alpha A brain. It depends on topological type of the domain. It depends on degree winding numbers and the framing. More generally, we can let X, L be the disjoint union of several frame agnostic alpha brains. And now we will have, we will still have a genus um, a number of poles, and now we have like one collection of winding numbers for each um, agnostic alpha frame. Uh, so, yeah. So now I'm going to tell you like two ways to define this invariance mathematically. So first definition is an early definition. We we um, form the moduli space of stable map of topological type GH degree beta prime and winding numbers. Um, so then this moduli space is a, yeah, it, it's a singular orbifold corner. So it's not clear how to uh, define, to, to uh, construct the fundamental class. But now we can do the following. So this, um, so the compact rank two torus acts homomorphically on X, and it preserves the Lagrangian sum manifold L. So it acts on the moduli space. And now the moduli space has some virtual tangent bundle, and we can just define the invariance by this integral. And but somehow, if if you have one brain, this is okay. You can get all the framing by varying 
by specializing to a one-dimensional subgroup, a circle subgroup. But if you have multiple, if you have like three brains, you cannot, so, so you can only, you, once you fix, you, okay, so if, yeah, so suppose that you have, um, three. So you can only once you fix some circle action, then um, so that you can so this circle action will. Yeah, so if you use this definition, then you cannot vary the framing independently for different brains. So, yeah, as pointed out by the Kanesku and Floria, this is like, you get this fractional framing. Um, so, yeah, later we came up with some different Yeah, so, so this, oh, so this is like I special, I have this, this is a rational function in U2 and U1, but it's homogeneous, yeah, it's homogeneous of degree zero. So you should get some U rational function in U2 over U1. And then you specialize to, for example, U1, U2, U S. Then you get a rational number depending on S. Um, yeah, so later we came up with some different uh, definition in terms of relative gromov witten invariance. What we do is we construct some uh, fomotoric log Claudial pair y hat v hat, where y hat is um, yeah is a fomotoric threefold. What is the word fold? Oh. Yeah, so actually what you do is you take this one dimensional OD closure and you do the formal completion along it. So you get something like this. But no, that 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 is let, let's call that X hat. And then instead of suppose that yeah, so let's consider the case where you want to this is this works better for outer brain. So so originally you have these three and you have like three Lagrangians. So then, so the one skeleton is like this, and you do the formal completion. Now you compactify it. So instead of, but of course I can only draw the, yeah, we do. So instead of relative to three Lagrangian, relative to three dividers, but actually formally this is three dimensional. Y hat is three dimensional. V1, V2, V3 are two dimensional. And so it comes relative invariance relative to these three. But now, like what, so, but now you, you, you need to use this framing because when you compatify this, you need to have, you need to, have like like decide the normal bundle. So yeah, so then it's determined in this way. So I call this C1, C2, and C3. And the normal bundle of C i is Y hat. Yeah, so as you can see that if you have different framing, you actually have different y hat. So this allows you to uh, vary this uh, framing independently. Okay, so now we have mathematical definition of all this invariance. So we can, yeah, so but this, so yeah, but it's, uh, we, we still define it by localization and it's 
quite technical to prove that it's a ra we can actually define a rational number in this kind of, of torus way. Okay, so now we have mathematical definitions, and then <coughs> now I want to um, sum give you a summary of conjectures from string theory on generating functions of this open group of written invariants, and a summary of mathematical results on these conjectures. Uh, so the conjectures fall into two categories. One is from the large randomity, the other is from the mirror symmetry. So, yeah, I, I will focus on the open sector. Um, so for so the yeah, there are many work on many works on this, but I think the ultimate version is this topological um, vertex. So it gives you an algorithm of the following generating function. You fix the topological type of the map, the degree <coughs> and winding numbers, and you sum over the topological type of the domain. So the topological vertex gives you a closed formula for this. And on the other hand, if you the mirror symmetry gives you generating function of another type. So now in you fix the topological type of the domain and sum over the topological type of the map and you get this FGH. So yeah, at least in this paper you um, yeah, you take just just one brain F magic alpha A brain. Actually in the yeah in in the topological vertex, it's better to use the second definition because under the large M duality, these framings are mapped to the framing of knots. And you can, var you can vary the framing of each component of your link independently. But in mirror symmetry, this framing is mapped to the choice of flat coordinates. And then, yeah, you, you can just choose one. Um, yeah, so the first conjecture is, yeah, proof mathematically. The topological vertex algorithm, so first it is applicable to any smooth toric labial threefold and actually also formal toric labial threefold. So in geometric engineering, you actually will encounter some like formal toric diagram. And they are all applicable. Yeah, so the topological vertex can compute gromov witten invariance for them. And yeah, we yeah, many years ago we proved the two lab case and we get some formula of it which which looks very much like the topological vertex in the full three lab case, but we couldn't prove it in general. And the full three lab case is actually a consequence of the Gromov Witten Donaldson Thomas correspondence of Torix threefold proved by Malik, Oblonkov, Okonkov, and Kandertanya. So if you specialize re their results to the Calabial case, it is equivalent to the topological vertex. Um, so in the remainder of the talk, let me, uh, so the predictions from mirror symmetry uh, have not been completely proved mathematically yet. So I'll summarize the known results in the remainder of this talk. So let me start with the holomorphic disk. Um, yeah, actually this, this case is um, conjectured <coughs> earlier. So um, given a toric labial threefold X and a frame Akhmatic Vafa brain LF, you can, th you can use this toric data to write down an affine curve in C star two, known as the frame mirror curve. Um, so the frame mirror curve has some complex parameters T1 to Tk, which are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the Kähler parameters of your original toric labial threefold. Okay, so this is the hori vafa construction. I think I need to assume that X can be written as a symplectic quotient, which is not true for any toric labial threefold. Um, so, well, this is this 
this conjecture is three topological vertex. So they conjecture that you take this um, meromorphic one form and integrate, and after the op mirror transformation, uh, you get the disk amplitude. So instead of like stating the conjecture and describing the proof for general torus defaults, which will involve a lot of combinatorics, I'll just illustrate this by an example. So I will give you the statement and outline the proof <coughs> for um, the local P2, the total space of O minus three over P2. Um, yeah, so we can we can prove that. Um, so for Han Fang can prove that um, in more generality when X is a symplectic quotient. This includes local toric final surfaces and toric Kraepelin resolutions of the resolved conifold. Well, when M is one, it's just a resolved conifold. But this doesn't include uh, for example, O1 plus O minus 3. Because in this case, we cannot use the Miro's theorem proof by given Tau and Leon Liouyao, as you will see very quickly. Um, so there are some previous results. The first one is by Graeber and Zaslo. They consider inner brain as a zero framing. And more recently, there are results by uh, Joe for resolved conifold. And, um, oh, actually, I think, yes. So, and <coughs> and, and Brini. But actually, the scope of Brini's paper is uh, much larger. And this is just a small piece of his paper. So in his r paper remodeling the A model, he describes some algorithm of computing uh, F0 H. So um, sphere with H puncture amplitude using dissolving and given talk work. Um, so first, so let me give you the statement. Um, okay, so. So this is a picture for O minus three over P2. And these three dots are three different Lagrangians. So you have three torus invariant P1s and three tor torus invariant complex lines. And these are three toric fixed points. I call this P. And we use this three disk to trivialize the first homology of these three Lagrangians. And using this data, you can write down frame mirror curve in phase one, two, and three. One, two are inner brains, and three is an outer brain. So the closed mirror map in this case is given by this. And the open mirror map, as you can see, it, de it depends on, um, on the framing and the location of your brain in general. So under this open and closed mirror map, um, the mirror formulas are given by these. Um, so you can see they are different in different phases. And also you see that in phase one and phase two, you should be able to have, you can have positive and negative winding because you can have, so for example, if you cover this holomorphic disk, you will have some positive winding. But if you can also have, but if you cover this half, you will have some negative winding. But in this sum, we don't consider zero framing. And but then for this outer brain, you should have only positive winding, as you can see here. And actually, you see that um, it has like even like more vanishing than the obvious vanishing. Like, so the obvious vanishing from the geometry is you don't have any negative winding, but then it's actually more restrictive than that. Um, so, yeah, how do we prove this? So I'll just 
So, um, so you write x as a GID quotient, and you use so, and then the four-dimensional torus x on C4, and it descends to an action on x. And this is the equivalent cohomology group of x. We introduce the following functions. Okay, so there are some typo in I. So, so in I function, there should be um, there should be Q D here, and then yeah, there should only be one of these. Uh, so we need to use the e equivalent your theorem proof like given to and Leon Liu Yao specialized to this particular case they say this i and j are equal under the equivalent neural map so th the second in the second line um, this evaluation one is from minus zero, one mark point x d to x. And this a is the same a like before. And so now, um, so this is, so now let C L F be the composition of the following map. So the first the first map is you restrict the equivalent cohomology to the equivalent cohomology of this point. So then you get some elements. Yeah, and then you further restrict to some, so you fix some Lagrange, and this gives you a one dimensional subtorus. And you further restrict it, so you get polynomial of one variable. And so then we first by localization we compute capital F Q Z F, which is the this amplitude. So we can express it in terms of um, the J fun the J function Yeah, it express is is the image of the J function under this C L F. And on the other hand so recall that we have this integral, uh, the path integral of this meromorphic one form on the mirror curve. And that actually satisfies some extended Picard's equation. Um, and so it has explicit hypergeometric solutions. And using that, you can write your <laughs> W, which is the integral of that meromorphic function in terms of the i functions. And by the mirror theorem, you know that i is equal to j, and now d is equal to d. So you know like big z and small x should like differ, like there's some relationship <coughs> um, between the open, open and closed neural map, and you know that you compare the difference of capital T zero, capital T and small T zero, small T, and you see that capital F and capital W are equal if we have the um, following open neural map. And then, so this minus three minus, minus lambda one is the second cohomology class in the equivalent cohomology. So after you apply this phi, you get a number times u. And this number is different in three phases. Okay, so that's, that's the proof. 
So finally, yeah, sorry. So very quickly, so for higher genus, there is this remodeling conjecture uh, by Busha, Clem, Marino, and Pascati, based on work by Anna Orenting and by Marino, uh, they c constructed some symmetric meromorphic differentials, WGH, um, and then conjecture that after a mirror transform, the uh, generating function of open gromophyte and invariance. Oh, actually, the left hand side of, yeah, should be capital Z instead of small x. So after the open and closed mirror transformation, um, so this open generating function of open Gromov Witten invariance of fixed topological type can be given by integrating this meromorphic differentials. Um, so this conjecture has been proved for the frame one like topological vertex, namely the one one brain in C3 by Lin Chen and by Jian Zhou. And Zhou later proved the conjecture for the frame three leg topological vertex. So you have three brains in C3. Um, so what they do is they actually derive the Anna Arantan recursion from the cut and join equation satisfied by the open gromov witten invariance. Okay, so here's some like progress in solving the conjecture in general, but I don't understand this, this work very well. So, but yeah, I think they seem to be very close to solving it using the matrix model. Uh, but yeah, so we would like to try another approach. It seems to be reasonable to try to generalize Joe's approach um, to any toric clavial threefold because for any toric clavial threefold, we also have a cut join equation for open Gromov Witten invariance. So we are working on that. So yeah, so so we are working on that now. Um, yeah, so thank you. Oh, so so you follow the Hori Vafak construction. Correct me if I said it wrong. So, <laughs> um, what is the framing answer, for instance? The frame. So oh, so if just the mirror curve, then it, there's no Lagrangian. You just first construct the mirror curve. So it it will be um. Yeah, so it is, yeah, let me just say it is of this form. But, but you, your mirror curve depended on the Lagrangian, right? Uh, the coordinate depends on the Lagrangian. So, the so, so you are just choosing different coordinates on C star 2, which is like PSL 2D. Yes, but then when you do that integral, if you use different coordinates, you get different series. Yes. But how about more like There's a lot of more examples with pushing out C3 by some uh, Well, so. There should be a similar story for that. Yeah, yeah, there is a similar story. I think, the, yeah, I think maybe some, I know some people like are working on this. And maybe we will work on this too, like at your workshop. <coughs> The framing is fixed here, right? Completely, like it's not deformable. Right? The framing. Like so if I suppose in the clavial threefold, I pick the linear system, and then I ask my curve to lie on elements of this linear system, basically like a manifold that is deforming itself. Does your picture cover that or not? I don't understand what. Like suppose I want to compute relative Gromov-Witten invariance, a curve lying in the 
yeah. such that the curve lies on a deforming surface, like a surface, it, uh, an element of a linear system. I just picked a linear system, so like a divisor class inside this report. Instead of picking the Lagrangian submanifold, I picked the divisor class. Well, it's the, so yeah, w is there a good elliptic boundary from this thing? Yeah, you can't holomo do you count holomorphic curve with certain boundary conditions. Yeah, but but you need the boundary condition to be elliptic so that you have a uh, just a so but uh, yeah. Okay, maybe I have. Yeah. Mm. 